right, welcome back well, to episode 134 of Chaotic Being Tonic. We have a brand new guest today. We're going to be seeing a lot more of him. If you read the blogs, you've seen him. John Siebels. I think I said that right. You got it. Um, he is uh, actually, where are you based exactly? I'm in Spring Hill, Florida. So um, far. best thing I can say is it's about 45 minutes from Tampa. Yeah, so you're you're about an hour and a half away from us. Uh, we're Sarasota, just south. Yeah, you're in Sarasota. Yeah, yeah. Forty five minutes. I won't go over that bridge time. though. So, <laughs> um, we ha- we have a full full week, I guess. This was a full week of of content. A lot of stuff has come up. We have the wheel today. Um, we're probably talk a little bit of football, but we'll always see what the wheel brings us. Um, we're just Excellent. gonna we're gonna start a little intro. Just tell us about yourself. Oh, man, I'm a math teacher here in Florida, a huge baseball fan. That's how I found you guys, uh, just checking out some of your stuff. Started writing blogs for you. Um, I'm a Chiefs fan, so this is a stressful weekend coming up here. Um, I collect, sell baseball cards, eBay, Instagram, TikTok, all that uh, is Spring Hill Sports Cards, if anybody ever wants to check that out. Awesome. Cool. Um, I love baseball cards. My dad has, like, three big boxes from when he was a kid, those big storage boxes of baseball cards. And the uh, he also has a couple of the starting lineup figurines, like a Roger. I think it was a Roger Clemens mm-hmm. one he has sitting in his in his closet right now. They still move. The st- yeah, the starting line figures still move on eBay. I, I check oh, them yeah. out from time to time. <laughs> yeah, I've I've looked. I've tried to say like, hey, maybe you could sell it, and, I, and then he's like, no, I'm not not selling any of that stuff. Not it's his yet. Collection. At least. I'll be buried with some of my baseball cards. So <laughs> literally, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's give her a spin. I never know what to do when the wheel's spinning, you know? All right, perfect start, John's choice. Okay, oh man, I've got a good one for you. Let me pull up my note here real quick, and we're gonna play a quick game. All right, so four playoff teams remaining. Chiefs, Ravens, 49ers, Lions. I pulled up the four most famous fans from each, because how can you have a sports podcast these days without talking about Taylor Swift in one way or another? Um, So which table are you sitting at? Chiefs, you've got Ant-Man, Paul Rudd, Taylor mm-hmm. Swift, Jason Sudeikis from Ted Lasso, and Brad Pitt. Was surprising even to me. Born really? Missouri. Chiefs? Yes. He's a Chiefs fan. There's, a lot, there's pictures of him all over Google with Chiefs hats on. Oh, wow. Uh, Ravens, you've got Michael Phelps, Carmelo Anthony, Edward Norton, the greatest actor of all time. I've heard he's a dick. And Bismarck Key. What was that? I've heard Edward Norton's a dick. That is disappointing to hear. <laughs> and Bismarck Key. Uh, if you know just the Just a Friend song, they don't have a lot going for them. Uh, 49ers, Jeremy Renner, that's Hawkeye, Miranda Cosgrove from Mike Carly, Andy Samberg and Rob Schneider, and the Lions, Eminem, Tim Robinson, Kid Rock, and Aretha Franklin. Can what we, table are you sitting at? So first, can we replace the band with Stavros Halkius, a comedian? Uh, he's a big Ravens fan. He did... I ha- heard that. He he did the sound. He, he has like the very famous sound, like... It's there, there's just something about Flacco, man. There's just something about Flacco. I think we're going to replace him on that table. Um, so Bismarcky out and Stavros is in. Yeah, Stavros has got to be in. Okay. Um, man. I mean, how can you not sit with Brad Pitt? And and I'm also a Swifty, so I love Taylor yeah. Swift. I am – I'm kind of – I like that she's gotten into football because of the aspect that, like, she brings little girls – into the to like love football and stuff like that um Mm -hmm. and again i don't like how the nfl shoves it down our throats i blame it on the nfl i don't blame it on taylor she really hasn't done much she's not she's not out doing football podcasts like she's just there she's just there yeah she's not bothering anyone and and with her actions um i mean i stavros has to be the number one answer to me so I would I would sit at the Ravens table just because it's Stavi. Okay. And and Mello seems like a fun guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Who who are the other two at that table? I mean Stavros was like the number one. Michael Phelps and Edward Norton. Phelps is great. Phelps is fantastic. Edward Norton, like I said, I've heard that's why he didn't keep his job as as the Incredible Hulk was because they said he was a dick. He was like a major yeah. dick on on set, and that's why he hasn't had I guess. I mean, maybe he just picks and chooses his jobs very well, but he hasn't had a ton of jobs. I love him as an actor. Um, yeah. I think my, my favorite. History X is one of the best. Mer- yeah, that's my favorite role with him. Um, it's got to be Ravens. To me, it has to be Ravens. All right. What, what See, I you? would say Chiefs Chiefs number one. I love Jason Sudeikis and Paul Rudd. I do love those. Two would be 
the Ravens. Unfortunately, as much as I want to hang out with Eminem and Tim Robinson, I don't want to hang out with Kid Rock. So Kid Rock really he seems turned like off a lot the Lions me. for me. He really seems like a mm. lot. Just he's he's over the top, and and his music's fun. It can be fun to listen to, but oh yeah, him as a guy, he just seems like he's just too much. It's it's too much. Like he hasn't left the frat house. Yeah. Oh, I, that's actually a really good. That's a uh, great way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> and what, what was so the what I'm, was the last? I'm hanging with the Chiefs. Yeah. The 49ers is Jeremy Renner, that's Hawkeye, Good. Miranda Cosgrove, Andy Samberg, and Rob Schneider, and I am I surprised this. there's not more super famous 49ers fans. San Francisco, Calif- in California, yeah. you wonder why there's not any huge, huge names. I mean, Andy Samberg's probably the biggest name on the list right now, Yeah, and that's not even a huge name. Chiefs have the most star power, but the Ravens have the best assortment, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. The Raven, yeah, that's definitely a wider net. Um, I like Rob Schneider as a comedian. He seems very funny. I've heard some things about him outside of it, but I don't. I really don't know. Um, I would just want to ask him about uh, hanging out with Andy, uh, the Sandman. Yeah, that's all Sandler, I want to hear from him. He's he's in that. Tell uh, me Sandler stories. He, he, I feel like he's not in that group as much. He didn't because you know Sandler has his group of actors that he's friends with, but yeah. he wasn't in Grown Ups too, which really shocked me, and that, that disappointed me because I loved his character that that sort of dynamic that they had um Andy Sandberg seems like a fun guy like he's somewhat yeah. in that in that Sandler group as well uh what was the uh that's uh that's my boy yeah oh yeah that's one together? of my favorite Sandler movies really yeah yeah that one's one of the I mean it, it, you have to watch it a bunch of times I think to get it but I've seen it probably 20 times like Wow. And that's a lot. I've, I have not. I have not seen it once. I'm not a huge movie buff. I, I, I stick love. To, I, I stick to my sports. Yeah, I love movies, but not like the preppy, prissy type of movie people who are like, "Oh, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch any of the Adam Sandler comedies with a ten foot pole because they're stupid. I, I, the stupider the better. Like some of my favorite movies are the worst movies ever. Like yeah. that's my boy. Got like horrible reviews. I think. But people are really starting to come around on it as well. Um, Hot Rod. Hot Rod has had a, a revival recently. I've seen Hot Rod yeah. uh, jokes on Twitter and uh, threads. Yeah, they're they're really start. I think Hot Rod's starting to come back. Um, so I know Superman Return, not a comedy, but that one's starting to come back as well. And I, I, Superman's my number one superhero. And when I watched that as a kid, I was like, "This is a great movie. Why is it getting panned?" And now it's starting to have a return because people are starting to realize. Oh, well, it was supposed to be, it wasn't supposed to be like this massive action Superman movie. It was more of a, like, romantic, I guess, more of a serious Superman role. But he still played it to Christopher Reeve as well. I've never seen a Superman movie, and that's uh, unfortunate. (laughs) You gotta gotta see some of them. Some of them. I've, I've, I've seen one or two Batmans. Zack Snyder got panned, and I'm a I'm a big Zack Snyder Superman fan. I I but I I'm somebody who goes into a movie and I can enjoy it no matter what. Like I'll I'll see the worst movie yeah. movie of all time and I'll be like, oh that was that was okay. I I can't get into musicals though. That's the one thing. Just the singing, the unnecessary singing, just makes me. Cringe. No Les Miserables. <laughs> oh God, don't don't get me started. I loved Les Mis. Four hours of <laughs> of no dialogue. <laughs> can't do that i just can't i'm i'm too too much of a dumb guy to, to i'm a dumb jock to be able to sit through that i'm just dumb and and I, I embrace it that's what the whole brand is about being dumb and stupid and then people take you seriously when you put out your takes your dumb stupid takes on the internet um yeah oh that's like uh like my uh bella checked with lana take I don't, I don't know how that fell through i don't get it how do you go with Raheem Morris when Belichick showed up to your office two times? <laughs> I mean, the, yeah, the, little, the guy literally. Well, I think I do think they went to Boston as well. Though I will give them that mm-hmm. they went they went to Boston once, but you have them for two two visits and you don't give them the job that they're leading them on. They're they're trying to bait what, Raheem Morris. In. What is a Bill Belichick interview even like? Like how how do you sit down and Bill Belichick? Like where? Tell us about some of your qualifications. Well, what do you know about developing a quarterback? Like, how do you what, even interview the guy? What, what do you know about um, fighting through adversity? Uh, <laughs> you know, may, maybe in in New Orleans or in Houston was that where they held that twenty eight to three Super Bowl? I think it was Houston. Mm-hmm. I want to say it was Houston. Um, 
which you're probably right. But um, yeah, what do you know about adversity and handling adversity, especially in in Houston? And he, he'll be able to tell you easily. So I don't know how you don't hire him. And the fact that, I mean, I feel like any of the other available jobs besides probably Washington and Seattle are on, are below him. But let's not get into that talk because yeah, we got head coach on the we wheel. We do have that on the wheel. Uh, so I'm going to erase this. We're going to give her another spin. I might have to like add in music. Bob Euchre appreciation. <laughs> Quick Bob Euchre appreciation. I pulled up his stats. The man hit four home runs or 14 home runs in five or six seasons. That's more than I can do. So I appreciate that off yeah. rip. Um, him in Major League, fantastic. Great, great voice in Major League. And, and obviously, we can't forget him being the Brewers announcer. Uh, he was trending this week on Twitter um, or X or whatever they call it now. Uh, and that made me scared that he was going to die because whenever a name trends, yeah. it's usually because they're dead or they're dying. Um, but Bob Euchre, Especially if they're old. confirmed alive, I guess. Um, definitely confirmed alive. Let's look up it because he's in a lot of movies, actually. Yeah, I had him on my I had his Wikipedia page up. Uh, oh, can you read off his filmography, I guess, if, yeah, if it has up. it on acting roles? Yeah. Acting roles. He was in Disney Plus, Monsters at Work. He was the voice of Bob Yucker. Of course, he is in the Major yeah. League. Uh, the Futurama episode, A Leela of Her Own. That's classic. Um, cameo appearances in OC and Stiggs. Never heard of it. Fatal Instinct. Who's the boss? Um, and then a series of Miller Lite commercials. Uh, yeah, the Miller Lite. I'll never forget the Miller Lite commercials, especially because Miller Lite, I think, is brewed in Milwaukee as well, or at least in Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. But just... Quick Bob Euchre appreciation. Hopefully, maybe he sees us. Maybe he sees it. Just know we appreciate you, Bob. Although I don't think he's doing Bob, too much. To... Shout us out, Bob. Yeah, I don't think he's doing too much surfing on YouTube at his <laughs> age right now. Probably got too much stuff to work on. Okay, name an athlete. Give me an athlete. Any athlete. Angel Baroa. Tell me about him. 2001 Rookie of the Year. I'm going to double check on that. I, have, I actually have a set uh, response to... Any name an athlete <laughs> is Angel Barroa. 2001 Rookie of the Year with Kansas, the Kansas City Royals. Mm -hmm. He hit 30, uh, 302, uh, 679 OPS. Absolutely tore up the league for about a year. And then was never seen from again. Never hit above 280 again in his career. It was really disappointing as a Royals fan. Because we had him, Mike Sweeney, we had a decent team. And all of a sudden, we were thinking, okay, we're, we're developing guys. We've got our infield set. That was right after we'd lost, like Jermaine Dye. We did have Carlos Beltran still at the time, and he just fell apart. And it's, that's, it's a very Royals thing to happen. You have one good year, and then it's over. Speaking of the Royals, so, yeah. that 2014 Royals team might be my favorite base, my favorite non-Red Sox team of all time. I remember I would have... I would. I never wear other jerseys. It's not my style. I know guys, people who wear them. They, you know, they're a fan of the Patriots, but they'll wear a Dallas Cowboys jersey or or whatever yeah. just because of the style. That I just, for some reason, it's something about loyalty to me where I'm like, I just can't do that. But that Royals team was probably the closest I ever I would have been to buying like a Mike Mustakas jersey. And I'm not oh, even loose. not even kidding. Like the that was, loose. and I know they won the the World Series in '15. They beat the Mets in that. Mm -hmm. I think it was like four one or four. It was a sweep, maybe. Yep. Um, four, well, we uh, the only the only game they won was uh, game two. Syndergaard pitched a great game, and we crushed them the, the other uh, four games. Yeah, I remember, but it just it wasn't the same to me that that '15. And as, I know as as a Royals fan, you're like, no, the Royals, the '15 Royals were my favorite, but. That 14 Royals team, just the the battle they went through, the fact they took those Giants to seven games, I mean, just, yeah, it's yeah. hard well, to Well, the hate Giants that. were the team of destiny. Mm -hmm. You couldn't beat the Giants in an even year when they had Bumgarner and Posey. I like the 14 year better because 15, you're expected to win the World Series that yeah. year. We gave away our entire farm system to bring in Zobris and Cueto. Mm -hmm. We signed Kendris Morales. We brought in a little more pitching. If we didn't win the World Series that year, then you just mortgage your future for nothing. Yeah. So that year was just stress all year. It's World Series or bust. 
14, I was happy that we made a wild card appearance. <laughs> that wild card game where we beat the Athletics went to 12 innings. Yes. I believe. I remember that. Salvador Perez hit the walk off single. That was the greatest moment of my life. And I, other than the birth of my children, I hope they didn't hear that. <laughs> Outside of the birth of my child, the 2014 world, uh, wild card game. Yeah, I'm just looking at um, this Kansas City team right now. Uh, they were one and six against the Red Sox. So quick oh, little flex on, on them there. Um, but uh, I'm trying to just look at, there's not a lot, I guess, of, of stuff they're showing here. Okay, so Sa obviously Salvador Perez. Alex Gordon, my God. I just I don't know why. He, he was just one of the guys I'll always remember. Billy Butler as well. The I think the double Lorenzo beat. Kane was on that squad. Yep. Lorenzo I think Kane. he the next year he was in fit, uh, the top five in MVP voting. We had um, Wade Davis, Greg Holland, and um, Kelvin Herrera. One of the I think the combined one of the combined lowest ERAs ever of a seventh, eighth, ninth inning reliever. We had James Shields mm -hmm. that year. We were loaded, and it was like it, we were sneaky loaded. You look at the line, the roster at the time. You say, "Okay, it's a it's a decent roster." You look back at it now, and you say, "How how did they not win the World Series yeah. more than once?" With yeah, everything they had. Okay, all this is bringing back memories. So San Fran beat Pittsburgh um, in the wild card game that year as well. So it was two wild card teams uh, that that mm -hmm. battled through. Okay, then you guys swept the Angels. I remember Baltimore beating Detroit. I don't remember that ALCS yeah. though. That's weird. I Beating really Baltimore. Remember. Yeah, sweeping Baltimore. Yeah, um, Jeremy Guthrie that year wore the shirt that said "These O's ain't royal," and that really pissed off a lot of Orioles fans. So, because Jeremy Guthrie had come from the Orioles the year before. I remember. I remember San Fran and St. Louis because that. I mean, at that time, St. Louis was a lot better. They were consistently good for a while. Um, mm -hmm. Man, my mem I guess my memory is really going, huh? I'm 21 yeah, years old. The, the shame, uh, what's a shame about that is if we had played anybody other than San Francisco, we would have won the World Series in five games. Yeah. It was, they won four games. Three of them were Madison Bumgarner wins. Mm -hmm. He won two starts, and then he came in in the seventh inning of game seven. Maybe he won three. I think he won game one, four. Yeah, game one, four, and seven he won. So take Bumgarner off that team, and we win easy. Because their next best pitcher, I believe, was Tim Hudson, and he was like fifty. Was Lincecum? Was that that was that was after Lincecum? Right? Lincecum would have been too old at that point because Lincecum, I thought he was like 2011 to 2014, was when he was just tearing everybody apart. Let's see. He was on that 14 team. I wonder what his stats were. Did he though. pitch though? I thought toward the end of his career, he was coming out of the bullpen. Okay, third World could Series be, I could championship. Be wrong. Um, he had an ERA of 4.54 in 13. Tim Hudson joined the Giants in 14. Lincecum fell fourth in the Giants' rotation to start the year. Struck out 11 and seven and two-thirds innings earlier in the on May 12th. Uh, oh, geez, he had a 9.49 ERA in six games from July 25th to August 23rd. Yeah, he was not the freak. He was no longer the freak. Became the pitcher of the record of record as the Giants took the lead, blah, blah, blah. Um, he wasn't used during the NLDS or the NLCS, even though he was on the roster. And then he did make an appearance in game two of the 2014. So that was, yeah, that was after he was tearing it up. And then he went to LA he, after that. The he reminds me of uh, Dontrell Willis. An incredible peak. Oh, my God. He was, I mean, I'll, I'll, nobody will ever forget the, the, the freak peak at that point. Like, I think it was probably 2012. I'll never forget that 11 World Series. I was nine years old. <laughs> I was sleeping on the couch. At a, like, we were at a family trip, and I was sleeping on the couch, and I remember watching that World Series, and everyone was out, and then they came back home, and I was faking sleeping so I could watch the game in peace. <laughs> So nobody would sit with me. I was like, I just want to watch this game alone because this is a great series, a great game overall. So good. Who did they memories. beat in, the tw in 12? Who did they beat in 12? Hold on. That was the, yeah, that was the even year. Um, 
The second of the second even year because they did when they had 10, 12, 14. Yeah. Right? 10, 12, 14? 10, 12, right, 14. Who up. did they beat in 12? It was the Tigers. Tigers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did because they the Tigers, Tigers yeah. They, yeah. Lost, they lost to the it Red Sox in the ALCS in 13, and that, like, that was like it. They, they haven't done really anything since. Well, I haven't done anything since Jim Leland left. Yeah. Welcome to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Jim, Jim Leland. Leland. He's, I, heard an, he was, I heard an interview with him very recently. He's, like, in, like, his late 80s, I think, and he's still doing interviews, mm-hmm. so... Good on him. He's a baseball he lifer forever. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's a baseball Coach lifer. Oh, well, he's like uh, Bo- Boshi. How old is Bruce Boshi now? Uh, I think he's in his seventies. Late. Yeah, he was one of the World Series, mid, mid to late seventies. He he has the biggest head of all time in, in Major League Baseball. Physically, the biggest. Nuh-uh. head. Yep. He, he that's has a to great, have that's a, a great he stat. Has, he has to have a specially ordered hat for him because of that's his head awesome. size. That's awesome. And when he was when he was playing, he would take his helmet with him, and they would repaint it whenever he would go somewhere else. That's awesome. Yeah, really interesting That's good stat. To know now. That My athlete. I mean, that that was that was ten minutes on on uh, the Kansas City Royals. Angel Baroa. Yeah, on, on Angel <laughs> Baroa. Um, see, I, I can't think of of our setup man for from 2013, but I'm just gonna go Koji Uihara. That that was the that wasn't the first guy, but that was the guy I had to think of. And I can't remember of our setup guy, um, the Red Sox setup guy, but Koji Uihara, just probably one of the greatest single seasons. And I think like if you if you think about closers, uh, probably like I think I 07 Pap, probably I think I want to say 07 Papelbon. And then um, 2013 Koji was like lights out. You can't do anything against this guy. He was I, I, I'm just going to look up Koji. Yeah, look this up. Uh, Nothing is cooler than elite closers in any sport. There's no role that tops that. And especially when you, when you go into the ninth inning, yeah, and you know you're going to get shut down. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's over. And I remember like when when Craig, uh, not Craig Breslow, uh, Craig uh, Kimbrell was our closer in '18. Mm-hmm. He was constantly, like consistently, just giving me heart attacks every every game. Because he was, he was, he was honestly like Papelbon. He liked to load the bases, but I had a lot less faith in him than Papelbon. Like Papelbon, sneaky, faith. like top ten all time closer. Yeah, kind of sneaks in there. I'm trying to see. Here we go. Red Sox memories from Bo Sox injection. Shout out. Um, he was a, he was nipping baseball. Blah blah blah. Checkered in Japan, spending ten seasons. I have find this. He played in Japan for ten seasons before he came here. That's great. Yeah, I think so. That's ridiculous. So he's like twenty eight. And yeah, nineteen ninety nine, he entered Nippon baseball, Japan. Twenty four at the time. Okay. Oh, Junichi Tazawa is who I was thinking. Tazawa. That was that was I've our setup. Never heard that name. Yeah. Uh, 2013, he retired 37 consecutive batters and he had a 1.09 ERA with a 1.61 FIP, a three war F F war F war. Um, and I remember when, when he closed out the world series, he just looked, made, um, Matt Carpenter look silly. Like he, that, that, that is a common Red Sox trope. If you close out the world series, you just make the batter look silly. They made Manny Machado look like an absolute fool in uh, in L.A. Chris Sale did. So yeah. it, it's also fitting that Uihara closed out the, the 13 World Series just with such a legendary season that he did have. So, uh, yeah. yeah, shout out, shout out, Koji. All right, perfect. NFL head coaches. Um, we've had a flurry yeah. of, of head coach signings that we did not talk about on Thursday's episode, um, including Jim Harbaugh going to L.A., uh, they they did put out that post that said, um, "Who has it better than us?" And probably fifteen Everybody. to twenty franchises have it better than than the Chargers right now. Um, but a quick you update. see that Michigan offered him one hundred and twelve million dollars to renege on his Chargers deal and come back to Michigan. That make him the highest paid college coach in, in, in the history of college sports. Um. And if I'm him, I would I take that out because what do the Chargers have? You're you're going into a rebuild. You have Justin Herbert, but 
he's not like a rookie rookie anymore. He's in his what fifth year. They have a lot of old pieces. Yeah. Keenan Allen is old and fragile. <clears throat> Austin Eckler wants out. Your defense is a little bit below average, mm-hmm. I would say. Your best young weapon is Mike Williams. He's not young. Yeah. What do you what do you have? You're gonna spend the next five years of your career getting them into contention when you're going against the Chiefs twice a year. But I don't I don't see the reason. It's Jim Harbaugh, and he's in the Harbaugh family. A football family, like, you know, guaranteed football family. His brother's already won a Super Bowl, and beat him. He can, yeah, he can sit. He can sit at the at the dinner table now and say, yeah, we both won championships in our respective leagues. But yeah. they're always going to be like, yeah, but the Super Bowl, like, come on. Uh, he he has the real ring, and Jim has the national championship, and he. Honestly, he, he had two cheating scandals in the same year. And he was yeah, suspended he didn't, they for the didn't, They didn't win season. it outright. Yeah. They didn't win that championship clean. So I don't even I don't even count it. <laughs> so now he wants to win a Super Bowl with a bad team. It's not gonna Chargers are never gonna win a Super Bowl. And yeah. I love that because I hate the Chargers. <laughs> of course you do. That's true. That makes sense. Um New England hired Gerard Mayo. That was a while ago though. Um yeah. I I don't know anything about Gerard Mayo except for the fact that he did play for the Patriots, and I think he won the Super Bowl with them a, a while. I think yeah, that was I, those early Super Bowls that they won. Um, that sort of came out of nowhere for me. I, I wouldn't think that Robert Kraft would go internal. Well, they went. Well, he did it quick. It, it was like, we're not yeah. even going to interview anyone. So it must have been decided. It must have been like, yeah, Gerard's our guy because mm-hmm. maybe he wanted to walk. Maybe it was like, it's either me as a head coach or I walk and they were like, all right, well, we're, we're going to bend to you and say, we want you here as a coordinator. Um, so we'll just let you be the head coach and we'll see how that works out. Uh, I well, they'll, what they'll do is they'll give him two years because that, that's another team that's not going anywhere. You, you can hire him. You can give it two years, mm-hmm. fire him and then have your pick, pick of the guy. You, nobody wants to be the guy that follows Bill Belichick yeah. in new England. Mm-hmm. That's why that's, that's what I think is, is going on. But if you follow Gerard Mayo, then you have a chance to bring the Patriots back to glory. Yeah, I think, yeah, Gerard Mayo, I don't think he'll ever win. And and it's it's going to be the same thing when you talk about Alabama as well. No head coach, the Dubo is not going to win, no matter what. He could go, he could go 10 and 1 or 11 and 1, however many games, regular season games they're playing. He could win the SEC. They could make a college football playoff, let's say as a top four team as well. And he still won't, unless like they win a college football playoff game, he won't win. They'll say it's not yeah. Saban, but it's not Saban. Like they'll accept if they lose a playoff game with Saban because it's Nick Saban. They won't accept that they lose a playoff game with somebody not named Nick Saban. It's just not going to happen. So he's he is in a situation where he will never win. And especially they lost like, I want to say they lost half of the 20 26 or 2027 graduating class as well to the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's set up in a no win situation. And I mean, I hope the guy succeeds, you know, just as a, yeah. as a football guy, I'm not a big Alabama fan, but I hope he succeeds. Um, but Alabama has to be elite for college football to work. Yeah. You can't, you can't have college football with Alabama, not in the top five. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's yeah. It's really difficult to have them do that. Um, Dave Canales They'll never going be able to not recruit them. Oh, sorry. Sorry, no, sorry, sorry. Oh, you're good. Uh, Dave Canales going to Carolina. I love it. I love it. Um, he turned Geno back. He revived Geno Smith's career. He revived Baker Mayfield's career. I think Baker Mayfield should go to the 49ers next year because he is a free agent. And they'll probably pay a lot because whatever is going on with the cap situation in San Francisco, they're they're geniuses at it because they're still they're still they still have a lot of cap space. Um, Canales, uh, apparently, don't they have to resign Chase, uh, Chase Young? I don't, do they need to? I mean, he, he's not, I feel like he's not what we expected him to be. Like he, he was expected to be yeah. this generational talent coming out of Ohio state and he just can't stay healthy. And honestly, he's, he's kind of a liability when it comes to the run game. He, he really can't get, mm-hmm. he can't get the leverage that he needs to play against the run game. And that's 50% of football. Like, and especially you need a guy who's able to stop the run in the postseason. And we're going to see what happens 
tomorrow as they this got is Fred Warner reported on Saturday. You do have Fred Warner mm-hmm. uh, helping, help, and he's one of the best in in the run game, will run stopping game we've seen in a decade. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I just don't have any faith in the 49ers. Yeah, um, Brock Purdy can't go all can't go wire to wire and do a playoff game. I don't think, and not make a mistake against a good defense. I, I think they're going to yeah, run we saw the Chiefs or the Ravens. We saw it last week as well. I mean, with they the 49ers weren't the 49ers until obviously they woke up and became the 49ers against Green Bay. But like I've I heard somebody saying that the 49ers are unstoppable, like they're dominant and they're unstoppable. I was like. What, yeah. what, are you, what, are, what are we seeing here? I mean, they struggled against the number seven seed, who, granted, they just beat the number two seed, and they were the Packers were on a run in the late season, but the 49ers are nowhere near unstoppable, in my opinion. I mean, even no. if they go out, let's say they They're kick the shit out of the Lions, I don't care. The AFC is, is a more competitive league anyways, and, mm-hmm. and, and I'll still say that no matter what the, what the Chiefs have looked like we saw what came out of the AFC in the playoffs. I mean, I feel like that Houston team could at least compete with, with the 49ers. Uh, you, you could have the yeah. bills could probably beat the 49ers if they matched up. It's just mm-hmm. the bills had the unfortunate opportunity to match up against their, their bugaboo in the, in the Kansas city chiefs. Yeah. They can't beat the, They can't beat the chiefs in the, uh, in the playoffs, but they always beat us in the regular season. I, I love when they beat us in the regular season. Cause I know you're not going to beat us twice. And, so and I guess get that one out of the way early. If, if we want to talk about Belichick, and we were talking about him earlier, because Belichick still doesn't have a job, I don't think he should be a head coach next year. Be, well, one, I thought Washington wanted him because they hired um, the, their new GM. I can't remember his name now, um, but he was a scout for the Patriots. He, that's where he got his start in the NFL as a scout for the Patriots during that early Super Bowl run. He won two Super Bowls with them. He won a Super Bowl 50 with Denver and Peyton Manning. And, and he's built this 49 he's helped um, build this 49er team. I thought it was like a done deal. I thought they were like, we're going to go get Bill Belichick. They have the new owner. They could also have a new name by the by next season. Um, and, and especially Josh Harris. I mean, he wants to make some big splashes as the new owner. Go out and get the greatest coach of all time. Go out and get Belichick. But Washington seems set on uh, Ben Johnson right now out of Detroit. So... I don't know where so who's left. Seattle. Going. Yeah, Seattle and Seattle has no interest. They they don't even seem to care. There has been no inkling that that they want Bill Belichick. I think Bill should either go to Miami or to Buffalo. Buffalo, you need a new defensive coordinator. Their defense was clearly a liability. I would like I would at least like to see a defensive coordinator and Bill Belichick. I feel like especially in a small market town, he stays in the AFC East that he already knows. He can go and dominate the Patriots for however long he can, he still owns the Jets. The Belichick factor yeah. is 100% a thing when it comes to Belichick versus the Jets. Um, and especially the Dolphins. The Dolphins are the up and comer right now. And he's owned the Dolphins, unless they're in Miami. Um, but he's been pretty does damn Belichick good. Against take a, does he take a non-head coaching position? Though? That's the problem. What are the odds he's willing? He didn't, he didn't go to Atlanta because he wants the GM position. He wants con- full control and, Right now, and I I respect that Bill knows what he wants. I also respect that owners are saying, no, you're not going to be the GM along with the head coach because, one, we've already seen what happened. That Patriots team did take a dive after he became the GM. And, two, why would you want to give a, a guy that load of, of – I mean, you, being a head coach and a GM, that's two full-time jobs you're working. And Bill is a football yeah. lifer, but sometimes it's good to have a second – a second head kind of at the top helping you out. Um, and I thought Especially Atlanta was going to be in. Huh? I was convinced. I was convinced it was going to be Atlanta and they're going to bring in Justin Fields. I thought that would have been a, a great uh, pairing. Yeah. Now, you know, it, who knows how to utilize tight ends better than Belichick, other than maybe Andy Reid. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen Kyle Pitts do anything Kyle Pitts worthy in his entire, entire NFL career. And that kills my dynasty team in fantasy too, by the way. <laughs> Uh, Justin Fields, Bijan Robinson, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, and Bill Belichick. Yeah. It, it would have worked. But I don't know. I'm not the boss. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I also I – don't, I don't like defensive-minded head coaches. Bill Belichick is the one that I'll say, yeah, he, he deserves it. But defensive-minded head coaches to me, 
they just when have they worked in this new era of of football? Dan Campbell is he's not really either one. He he seems to be more of the I'm going to make the 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 game like the time decisions. I'm going to make the fourth down decisions, which I don't agree with. The, I don't agree with the decision he makes. But right now, to turn this Lions team around, you just kind of got to take what you get. Like, you have to just say, all right, well, he has turned it around the Lions, so we're just going to take that. He's scrappy. Yeah. I'll give it to him. He's scrappy. Yeah. You need to be in a a, a team like – a team that has had no success, like, ever. mm -hmm. You have to be scrappy. You have to fight. He reminds me a little bit of Mike Vrabel early on in the Titans Mm -hmm. era. Players loved him. He wasn't – might not even have been a very good coach. But the players – Loved him. The city loved him. And I was stunned when the Titans let him walk. He's a great guy. I mean, I, and, and they went yeah. out and got Callahan, which, I mean, he's, he's going to be, he's going to be a puppet for the GM. He's going to be a puppet for the owners. They want a yes man. The, they want a yes man. And what's a new coach. He's going to be a yes man, no matter what. And as a Colts fan, I am glad that they hired Brian Callahan because yeah, just, they're gonna suck. Yeah, lots of screens, lots of just useless pass plays. Um, obviously, he did develop Joe Burrow, so I mean, we have to give him that. Like Joe, but Joe was Joe wasn't a sure thing, but he was a very likely thing. As close, yeah, as he was close about, as you can get. Yeah, he was as close as you could get to a sure thing. Um, Andrew, I mean, you could compare him to like Andrew Luck coming out of college just with the year he had. He threw for I want to say it was six thousand yards. That final year at LSU, and they ridiculous. how many games did they play? They play like thirteen games. That's that's insanity. He threw sixty five touchdowns but who, and like five. Who are you passing to? Think about this. That's like it's almost like going out and getting your three buddies that play AAU basketball and taking them down to like the pickup. Yeah, you've got Jamar Chase, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, mm-hmm. Justin Jefferson. Yeah, and I mean they had other NFL caliber talent on that team that were overshadowed by those three. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And then he gets to bring his boy to Cincinnati with him. Yeah, it's insane. And hopefully he gets traded because of their because of injury issues. I'll take him on the Colts. I'll be I'll be perfectly fine. I will take as as a representative as the Colts fandom. I will personally take Joe Burrow just for Bengals fans. You're welcome. <laughs> I got his contract off the books for you. Um, you don't have they to worry it. about hurting him anymore. You're welcome. I took that stress off your backs. Don't. I'm doing that as a favor Good. to Cincinnati fans. Congratulations. Well, let's see. One of my four predictions in my last article was the Bengals Super Bowl window is closing. So Already. that would work. Get rid Already. of Joe. And it was, it was open about that far, and now it's, it's there. That I'll was trade quick. you Gardner Minshew for him. How about that? I'll even throw in Gardner Minshew. He almost took us to fair. the playoffs this year. Very fair trade. Very mm-hmm. fair. Almost too, I'm, o- yeah. I'm, I'm almost giving them a deal. You're giving away too much. Yeah. We're get- Gardner Minshew is giving away too much. Um, <laughs> other head coaching positions that have been filled. Uh, we talked Brian Callahan, Tennessee Titans. Fantastic for me. Um, and uh, the Raiders hiring it, Antonio Pierce felt like it had to be a given. Great hire. That was that was like a. It was like if you don't, what the hell are you doing? I mean, Max Crosby was ready to walk. Devontae Adams was ready to walk. You had to hire him, and even if he doesn't work out, I don't think anyone will blame the Raiders for hiring him. That's like the one coach. I think um, I, I hate that bubble. That's anytime I do. Well, it can't this. be. It can't get any worse for the Raiders. It can't get any worse. Yeah, than it was mean, in it the was last the... two years. You went from Gruden, the Gruden debacle, mm-hmm. to now having a, a, a players' coach, yeah. and that's that's great. Yeah, I think it's a great hire. Was... Um, but if I was a if I was a a head coaching candidate, I wouldn't take Seattle. I wouldn't take any of the Miami openings. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even wait on Philadelphia. Yeah. I want to see what Andy Reid is going to do. Because if Andy Reid retires this year, which he might, that's the biggest job opening of the last 20 something years. That'd be like Absolutely. if, if that's Belichick, Belichick retired leaves. after Super yeah. Bowl three. Yeah. That's, that's Belichick leaving after Super Bowl three. That, I mean, who else when not, I guess if Dungy retires after like the 06 Super Bowl, if, if Dungy walks away. 49ers. 49ers during the Steve Young, Jerry Rice era. Yeah. It's you're guaranteed a Super Bowl ring if you just do a halfway decent job. Just keep Mahomes on the field and your job's done for you. When did I mean, if, obviously, it's, it's harder than that, but. Try and see when Dungy did stop coaching. Because um, I, I know I know what's his name. Uh, I can't remember. Um, what the hell was his name? 
Oh, Dungy retired after 2008, and then what's his name came in. I, I really can't remember. He was the Lions head coach. Um, bald guy. Not Caldwell. Caldwell? J- yeah, it must have oh, been. Oh, was it the one who – was he the one that missed – he had can- – was it the – Jim Caldwell. Who was yeah, the one that was, had, was Jim that had cancer? Uh, Chuck Pagano was who after was Jim Caldwell. Pagano, yeah. Pagano. Chuck Pagano um, was after that, but Caldwell took over Dungy. But that was, I think that would have been, I think if the Colts won the Super Bowl in 2006 and then Dungy retires, that would have been like the Andy Reid style opening. I think when, when Dungy retired in 08, it more felt like a, I guess, partial, like, eh, this Colts team is, you know, they, they did go to the 09 Super Bowl, but Manning was old and, and it wasn't as big yeah. of a deal. He was, yeah. and obviously we know what happened. Everyone knows what happened after the Colts released him. They draft Andrew Luck and Manning. Manning finds refines his footing, Screw which us. I don't blame the Colts organization for that. Peyton Man, I don't know if you know this, but Peyton Manning actually had the idea of doing. He would come back in 2012, and they would do a quarterback by committee thing. So Luck would be with Andrew Luck. Luck would do the. I think luck would be from like the other team's goal line until the red zone. And then they would bring Manning in, in the red zone, which is like weird. That's dumb. You just can't do that. in the NFL. It's never been done for a reason. Yeah. And, and that... except by the Virginia, the Virginia tech in like 2007 when they had Tyrod Taylor and somebody else. And they would have, when was Vic Taylor there? Do Vic like... was there earlier, right? Early 2000. Vic was there earlier. And then Marcus Vic was already gone. It was Tyrod Taylor and a white kid. I forgot for his name. And they would Taylor would run all the like wishbone formation stuff. He would he would run the running plays and he would do all the screen passes and they had another quarterback. 2007 oh, here. 2007 Orange Bowl was when they we beat uh they lost to KU that year. And the Orange Bowl that was great. I was there. Let's see. Um hold on. 2007 Sean Glennon might have been the second most famous Doesn't... Glennon to play quarterback. <laughs> Did he also have a really long neck? Doesn't look Did like Mike it. Glennon. Mike Glennon looked like a lollipop. Yeah, it was ridiculous. He was. He also was only on the practice squad for the Minnesota Vikings in two thousand and nine, yeah. and did not have anything else. That must have been him. Yeah, because he would also have been there in 08. Yeah, the. Virginia Tech fans kept going on and on about, you can't stop two quarterbacks. And we did. Yes, you so can. We you a, you absolutely can stop two quarterbacks. If neither of them are good, especially. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm curious about what would have happened if you had Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck. Um, it would have been great television. Yeah, it would have been really funny. It would have been really weird. It's like, okay, let's say Andrew Luck is humming on like a 10-play drive. They get to the 20, and they're like, okay, you're out of here. It's like, bro, What? What, like why? Yeah, why? Like Peyton Manning. I mean, it's Luck was obviously the more mobile quarterback. I, I guess I could understand like a, a defensive. You look at it on the defensive side. It's very. It would be difficult to switch from Andrew Luck, who has the threat of running, to Peyton Manning, who doesn't have the threat. I'm sure you're switching up defensive schemes, but maybe that would be like the Wildcat year, where there was one good year with the Wildcat, and then teams were like, "Oh, yeah, we know how to stop this now." Just a running play. Stack the box, yeah. It was very easy. I don't know. Do you have two playbooks now? Do the receivers have to learn the Andrew Luck playbook yeah. and the Peyton Manning that, playbook? That would be insane. What if, what if Manning and Luck's receivers' uh, preferences don't match up? Now do you have – what are you pulling up guys from the practice squad every other week yeah. because you're going to have a Manning heavy week? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. What if, I mean, what if Manning and Luck never got along? Like what if they just absolutely mm-hmm. despised each other? That's very good. Like that's very common. And I remember, yeah. I think, I think that was a small part of the reason why Polian actually retired in 2011. Because mm-hmm. Polian was like, "I'm not going through this circus. Like this is a fu- this is ridiculous." Because obviously, when you release Peyton Manning, it's going to be a circus no matter what. Like you just yeah, and especially when he finds immediate success oh in Denver. Yeah, and and Ry- I've, I, I honestly, I, I'm like starting to feel bad for Ryan Grigson too because he was the GM after Polian. And he was also the one that like destroyed Andrew Luck with with his lack of offensive line, and and I remember I think they were like begging Polian, please draft draft like a skill player, or no no they were begging him to draft an offensive lineman, and like he drafted like 
not Paris Campbell, but somebody else. Uh, I can't remember who it was. Um, Colts. I want to say. You, how do you throw away that kind of talent? It, it, you know, Andrew Luck da- can pass to. And- no. Was it your boy? It wasn't your boy Donald Brown, was it? No, not Donald. Donald Brown was drafted in 2011. <laughs> I want to say. Um, here's a name: Bjorn Werner. They drafted a defensive end in the first round at 24 and 2013. Well, that that panned out. So I mean, obviously, <laughs> right call. Um, listen to this 20. This 2012 draft is fantastic, though. Um, you have Andrew Luck, Colby Fleener, who ended up working out tight end from Stanford, who was with Luck, uh, Dwayne Allen. Pretty solid career. T.Y. Hilton uh, in the third round. Excellent. And then um, Vic Ballard, who was another – I mean, he was like an okay, okay running back um, for the Colts Yeah, it was well. like a – yeah. Uh, I picked him up for a week or two, I'm sure, in fantasy at one point. Yeah, I think I remember him having like a very – yeah. Uh, it, he, he had like a few weeks where it was like, oh, Vic Ballard, maybe, you know, just one of those guys. Uh, Philip Dorsett, the Colts took him at 29 – uh, in 2015, and everyone was like, "Why didn't 29th you go overall? Out? 29th overall, wide receiver out of Miami." Oh they were like, "Why? Gracious. Why would you do that?" Um, if you didn't have Phil Andrew Dorsett. Luck, can find anybody. He could find anybody. You could put like one of my children out there, and he would get them the ball. Why do you? Why are you investing in skill players when you can just protect Luck? If you mm-hmm. give him four seconds, he's yeah. going to find open receiver. And well, he's going to make somebody open. The the wide receiver, I mean, uh, Luck, there's even a clip. Actually, today is the anniversary of Andrew Luck's final uh, game. He played in the Pro Bowl uh, with, when the Pro Bowl was still real. Um, and he was even talking mm-hmm. about how he was like, oh, man, I love my tight ends. I just, I love my tight I love ends. love tight ends. Tight, yeah, <laughs> I, I love tight ends too. But um, he had Jack Doyle, Colby Fleener, and Eric Swoop, who are all three at least solid, like at their – Swoop at his best was a solid tight end. Uh, wide receivers, yeah. you had T.Y. Hilton and Andre Johnson as like your top two guys, which that was towards the end of Johnson's career. But I remember that That's 2015. I remember that 2015 season. I remember when they traded for Andre Johnson. Um, I was playing Madden at the time, and across the bottom of the Madden thing, it had breaking news: Colts trade for Andre Johnson. And I was like, "Holy shit!" And then Andrew Luck got hurt, like early in that year and then it was just over like it, it wasn't happening but offensive I'm so line sorry for your loss that that 2015 offensive line was anthony costanzo who was good at the end of his career mm-hmm. but at the start he was a liability um you had jack muhort who again at the beginning he was okay but he was still somewhat of a liability and then these names joe wrights who did nothing for us lance lewis don't even rem- remember him uh, Khaled Holmes, Jonathan Harrison, and Denzel Good, all like whatever. Like Denzel Good was a seventh rounder. Jonathan Harrison, undrafted. Uh, Khaled Holmes, fourth rounder, so not bad. And Lance Lewis, seventh rounder. No investment. I would have if 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 I was building a team, and then we all love to be co- uh, you know armchair quarterbacks. If I was building a team. The absolute first thing I would do, even if I had the number one pick, I would trade the number one pick, first of all, and I'd build the trenches yeah. before I even put in a quarterback. I would build up the trenches. I wouldn't care about anything else. I would take all all linemen. I would just take all linemen and be like, well, they have to work out, right? Like they can't – some of these guys can't not work out, just the law of averages. Because the trenches, I mean, that's – if you can control the run game – on both sides of the ball, you're going to win a lot of football games no matter what. It just – it doesn't matter. And then I would put a I would put a young quarterback behind a great offensive line because then you really know what they are. If you put them behind a bad offensive line, you don't know what they can be. That's what we did. That's what Kansas City did. Mm-hmm. We, we, when Alex Smith was there, we had a great offensive line. We could run the ball down anyone's throat, even with, like, Spencer Ware. Yeah. And we had that the year before Kareem Hunt came and we had bad running backs and we were still one of the top running teams. And then you put Mahomes back there and give him Kareem Hunt. And we blew the whole league up. I'll never for well, we, I'll we never already set Jamal up. Charles. I, I don't I don't let anyone. Jamal Charles is the Jamal best. Charles. Do you know how Jamal Charles was discovered by Texas? No. This is great. Special Olympics. Jamal Charles was a sprinter. Look it up. Jamal Charles is a sprinter in the Special Olympics. Jamal Charles has Quite a few learning disabilities. 
Well, you ever listen to him speak too? He's he's yeah, he's not a very bright guy, unfortunately. But yeah, the Special Olympics gave him a start. Jeez. Oh yeah. Uh, at age ten, he won a gold medal at the Special Olympics. Um, let's see. Gave me my first chance to discover a talent I didn't know I had. Yeah. Yeah. I, he gave a struggling he to was read at a, a uh, learning disability. I don't know if it says exactly what. I mean, I don't need to know, but just curious. No. Wow, that's really interesting. Good for him. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love the Special Olympics. But yeah, I, I never, I never let anyone forget about Jamal, like the peak of Jamal, Jamal Charles, because I feel like it kind of gets forgotten because you had so many other great running backs at the time. And like when I we hear were, like Okoye, Priest Holmes, Larry Johnson, Jamal Charles, Kareem Hunt. Yeah, that's and just rattle them off. Yeah. It was, it was incredible. I'm just, I'm just talking about running backs of like the the 2010s, like the early 2010s. I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of those guys get somewhat for like those kind of fringe backs get forgotten because like that was kind of the end of frank gore's career because i would i would think frank gore was bigger like in the late 2000s um and obviously he was on that miami team that was like he has played forever and ever and ever that, and ever that and ever. miami team like could have probably went to the playoffs i feel like if you put him on the field like the year after yeah. they won that national title um they probably would have gone to the playoffs so yeah, just with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh yeah, we can't even forget that. You know what? I I almost feel bad for the Rock. I mean, I don't because we saw what happened, but like he was Good. a he was not a bad player, and he stuck behind Warren Sapp. Like, what are you yeah. what are you supposed to do? And you can't blame Miami for like saying, "Yeah, we're gonna play Warren Sapp, who's like one of the greatest linemen of all time, like defensive linemen of all time." So can't blame him, but man, I mean, I think it worked out okay. For, for the rock. Oh, I'm sure. I think he's doing okay, all right. I'm now, sure he's fine. But still, yeah. <laughs> all right, one more. You could buy an NFL team now. He's he literally bought the XFL. He he bought a league. Yeah. Sporkle. I forgot about that. Let's go. Sporkle. I'm bad with movies, FYI. So I've already mentioned that. I don't we'll, I don't we'll do we'll do an NFL Sporkle. We can we can do that. Perfect. Or we could do actually I haven't done Major League Baseball. Let's see if we can do like two thousands Major League Baseball Sporkle. <sighs> all right. Gonna share my screen here. See if I don't if I don't show out here, it's gonna be uh it's, it's gonna be embarrassing. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um hold on, I'm gonna find the search bar. Not that. Yeah, you don't need a search sporkle. I don't need to search sporkle in into sporkle. <laughs> I wonder if I can do maybe like twenty tens baseball. Batting title eligible players, thirty five 120 from 2000 to 2010s just athlete i think athletes of the 2010s let's do that it sounds or, like fun yeah let's just do athletes of the 2010s that's all that matters i'm actually gonna have to make this bigger some of these are difficult oh we just gotta name all these guys yeah yeah all right so the top oh, this is easy top easily clayton kershaw kershaw i uh i met the next guy cam newton Oh, you met Cam? Yeah, I was bartending at it in uh, St. Petersburg, and he came in after they played the Bucks one year and bought a cigar. Oh, wow. Didn't say anything. Yeah, <laughs> didn't say anything, but he's, seemed like a nice he's guy. He's still trying to get to Atlanta. He still wants that Atlanta job. <laughs> like, good Lord. Just just get, no. give it up, dude. You're you're older. Like you, this... you had a great career. Fantastic career. Just give it up, but whatever. Um, Miggy. Yeah. Oh, we going baseball now? Yeah. I'm Maybe just going down Trout, Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant. There's more oh. on the bottom, too. Yeah. The you now, the hockey ones, I'm going to have a, a tough time with. Here, we can we can come down. Uh, Bryce Harper. Easy. And Justin Verlander. Wait, is that – scrolling a little bit. Is that Verlander? Yeah, yeah, that is Verlander. I weighed on him and his girlfriend once. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's oh, wait, a, he's wait, a really the, nice guy. The girlfriend or a former girlfriend? Yeah, the girlfriend. Oh, Kate, that Kate, one. Kate Hudson. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> and we got Eli. We've got Adrian Peterson. Uh, Roethlisberger. J.J. Watt. You, I forgot how to spell R-O-E-T-H-L-I-S-Burger. Roth. There we go. Uh, yeah, I would have gotten that. Adrian Peterson. Peterson. Manning. Eli Manning. Up there, Rogers. almost the better Manning had a uh, Peyton not won the second Super Bowl. 
He would, yeah, that would have been the more successful Manning, which is crazy because he still talked about like he's not a Hall of Famer. I think he's a Hall of Famer. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and, when he, he had retired two years earlier, yeah, I think I think sticking around for another year killed him. Yeah, that because then you really, say, oh, he was, yeah, you know, that was sad. When you, when you take this average career, his career averages, well, so what? Yeah, his peak was elite. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, just like Joe Flacco. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Steph. Joe Flacco, Delaware, uh, Delaware Bluehen. Yeah, legend. Delaware Showing Bluehen, out from my legend. hometown. Uh, Durant. I was born in Wilmington, Delaware. Durant, uh, Wade, Blake Griffin. Those, and, those and Miami famous teams. Ravens fan. Oh, Blake Carmel Griffin Anthony. is. No, no, uh, no, Carmelo oh, Anthony, no. famous Baltimore Ravens fan. I wonder if they'll do me. Those oh, Miami no. teams, 2013 Miami. Is the best basketball team ever. I don't care what anybody says about uh, the Michael Jordan peaks. Bryce Kepka. Spieth. Uh, one of them is, yeah, Jordan Spieth. There we go. Uh, Roy McIlroy. Is that Tony? Is that one of them Tony? That's not right Tony here. Fino. Is that Sergio Garcia? Yeah, that's Sergio. Uh, yeah, it's Sergio Garcia. And we missed one up top. Yeah. Dustin Johnson, Bubba. And, and Yeah. Uh, this it. one is Patrick Kane. It's not Pat. But yeah, I was say Patrick Kane. Crosby. Sydney. This one is Ovechkin. Ovechkin. Who's the other? Pittsburgh. Uh, it's not Mario Lemieux, is it? Is that too early? I th- yeah. Um. Shoot. I know is the underneath, name. Underneath is that Brian Quick? Oh, Jonathan yeah. Quick. Or Jonathan Quick. Oh, that was close. Uh, who's, Brian, who's, yeah, the other, Brian Quick. who's the other? That's a that's a goalie from the Rangers. What's his um, handsome guy? I don't know. Um, oh man, try that. Try put handsome guy in. See if he's, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, shoot. What the hell is his name? Let's crush tennis real quick. And oh, I if don't we, know. We have time. I'll know uh, Joker. That's and that's uh, Murray. Or. Uh, Murray is the, is the guy to, top right, Andy Murray. He's married to uh, Brooklyn Decker. Good for him. Also, also. But yeah, that's a, that's the Joker. How do you, uh, Novak? D, DJ Okovich, something like that. DJ I think it's o- DJ. DJ, okay. D, DJ, okay. V, I, C, H. Yeah, try that. See if it gives it to us. It's... Does it have to be spelled correctly? I think it has so. to be close. I'm just, I'm gonna look. Put up Novak. Things, just so. put Novak. I did try Novak. I don't know if that worked. D J O K O V I C. There we go. Yeah. Um, D J. Yeah. Okay. Top one. That's the oh. Uh, Osaka. Oh, so, yeah, Naomi Osaka. That feels a little late to me. I guess yeah. this is, I guess like uh, 2019, maybe that was like when she really started to break through. Michelle Wee, was she tennis or, That's or golf? That's golf. That's golf. Golf, okay. Um, That can't be Kornikova, four down, can it? Is that too late for Anna Kornikova? A and A. Yeah, I'll look up Korna. K O U. R N I K O V A. Is that no? Is that her? No. No. Whew, I have no idea. Then. I have. I I'm have, shocked. We got four of them. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. I would say or three. Still three. three is good. I don't know who this guy is. No idea. I want to get. I want to get the two hockey guys. Um, what about? I, I like I know this I know the handsome guy on the bottom I know who what his name is it is I've I think he's I think he's the goaltender for the Golden Knights now I can't remember no so we're, not, we're missing five we're missing three tennis okay two hockey yeah let's just see if there's any more um, Golden Knights Vegas I watched that Stanley Cup their first one um, it's I don't think it's I don't think it's the Golden Knights now that I'm thinking about it I have no idea. I re- he played for the Rangers, famous for the Rangers, like very, I just, and it's not Jonathan Quick, because he's already on here. Um, on the board, yeah. If I saw it, like it, it's one, it's like on the tip of my tongue. It's it's one of those names. I give up. I have no idea. Yeah, I give up. 
I'm going to hit the, there should be a give up button. Yeah. Uh, tell us. Hendrik Lundqvist. Oh, yeah. And let me see these. Stan Warinka. I would never got that. Victoria Azarenka, I should have known that. Lee Na, I wouldn't have got that. And of any Malkin, no idea. No. No. But problem. what was it? What was the average? Uh, the average 60. So we got was way 60%? above average. We crushed. Yeah, we crushed it. Fantastic. We're geniuses. Yeah. That's why we're professional uh, sportscasters. Absolutely. Um, all right. So um, <laughs> that's all. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share the, the, the whole thing. Um, and we will see you on Thursday for conference championship wrap up and Super Bowl slight preview. Hopefully. And hopefully it's a Chiefs. Go Chiefs. <laughs> 35 I'm, I'm going to be honest. honest. Chiefs. I am I am hoping for the Ravens. Not to I have a I'm a okay. I'm good friends with another Chiefs fan. I remember watching the 2013 wild card game with him as well. And uh he's he's like die hard like screaming all the time, but I am rooting against him and I'm telling him I'm because I'm watching it with him. I'm going to be like I want Man. another I want, I just want to see Lamar try and prove himself. That's it. Um, uh, well, hey, if the Chiefs lose, give me about four days before we talk again. It'll all right. be good. <laughs> You're fine. You won two hey, Super thanks Bowls. for having me. You're good. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I oh, four more. Four more. That's it. That's, that's when it's more. acceptable. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> we will see you on Thursday.